Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Welcome to this very special edition of Atlanta Business Radio. We are broadcasting live from the Georgia State University Entrepreneurship and Innovation Institute. Lee, you ready for this, buddy? I am. I'm excited. Well, we've had a good time. We've already uh, uh, made some new friends, caught up with some old ones, had some marvelous conversations. Every time we get one of these going, the the IQ average in this room goes up dramatically. Uh, But beyond that, it's just these are inspiring, invigorating conversations with people who are committed, passionate about their work. I love capturing these stories. This segment is going to be no exception. First up in this segment, please join me in welcoming to the broadcast entrepreneur in residence with the GSU ENI program, Mr. Ken Mathis. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. Well, Ken, before we get too far into things, can you talk about uh, entrepreneur in residence? What exactly does that mean? And That's how a great you question. Folks? We sort of figured that out here. I was looking for something to do. I, I'm a double alum of Georgia State, MBA and you know, bachelor's degree. And I was looking for something to do, and I met uh, with uh, Dr. Richard Welke, who founded the ENI department. And we had a long conversation, and he said, uh, we'd love for you to come and help us out. I said, what does that mean? He said, I don't know. Let's figure it out. So we came up with this title of Entrepreneur in Residence. I am an entrepreneur. I've started several businesses. And I was looking for something to do, and Richard said, uh, Dr. Welke said, okay, you're our first entrepreneur in residence. And we don't know what that means, so we're going to make it up and see how it goes from there. So, uh, and that was two and a half years ago, and we've been making it up for two and a half years. And then what are some of the activities you're involved with? Well, I, I run the incubator for Jordan Free and I, and I have four teams per, per semester that I work with to coach them on how to launch a business. I also teach a class, a formal classroom setting uh, of how to scale a business. And um, about a year ago, I went to Dean Phillips and said, you know, Dean, we have uh, a lot of students that need help. We have an ENI, and there's a lot of Georgia State alum. I'm one of many. I said, it'd be great if we had some kind of program to put these two together, mentors and mentees. And now I didn't call it a mentor or mentee. We added that title later. But that's how it all got started a year and a half ago with, Dr. with, uh, with Richard Phillips, the dean. He said, Ken, okay, put your money where your mouth is and, uh, get it and stand it up and go for it. So that was a year and a half ago. Now, conceptually, uh, the idea of having an entrepreneurship program inside of a college is kind of a little odd, right? Uh, I'm sorry, it's a little odd. Uh, odd in the sense that entrepreneurs tend to be people who don't follow rules. Oh, yeah. We, we, they, don't, <laughs> you know, they don't get their doctorate uh, in anything. You know, they're just kind of winging stuff and trying, like you are with the well, mentor. You, know, you're, you have a blank sheet of paper and you can make it whatever it can be. Universities, I think, uh, universities have recognized, <clears throat> excuse me, universities have recognized that in order to teach today's student, you've got to relate to them and be... be becoming a, an entity that we can adapt to the current economy and the current standings and things, how things are going. Um, one of the things that we, that I personally have taken on is uh, this charge of adapting to what the students need today and how to become, an, and everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, it's really hot, and which is great, but what does that really mean? And w- what I'm trying to do is loop in entrepreneurial, uh, those with entrepreneurial spirits that can come and help these students, and that's what we're doing. Right, so you're creating this kind of network of alumni who have gone and ventured into the business world and become an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Um, there's, there's probably somewhere between 75,000 and 100,000 Georgia State alum in the Atlanta area. And there's a lot of us that have started businesses uh, from scratch. And we started businesses inside big businesses. I've done both of those. And uh, we... Um, we're, we're putting things together in a very creative way. And, we're, and the university, the great thing about the university is uh, we've, adapt, we've really embraced the entrepreneurial spirit. And we're going at it from a lot of different directions. We're, I'm just going at it from one direction for me and I. Now, a lot of universities would be too rigid in having entrepreneurism taught by business people that aren't PhDs in whatever their function is, right? Uh-huh. Something called a terminal uh-huh. degree that I found out about. I don't have a terminal degree. I have a master's degree, but to have a terminal degree as a PhD, you can't go any further. So I don't have one of those. 
so they have their special dispensation. Don't get me. I don't want to go too far down this path. Um, but there's special ways you can have uh, teachers, professors, and faculty members that aren't uh, PhDs, and I'm one of those. Uh, so, but there's ways to deal with that. And that, and that's what G, to me, GSU is being super innovative and risk taking in exploring this way of working with students. And I agree 100 percent that students are different today than they were maybe 40 or 50 years ago. That they need to be more. Do you have to be more nimble? You have to be able to kind of meet them where they are in a lot of ways. I don't. I don't want to get Dean Phillips in trouble, but when I was standing this up, he said to me, "Ken, go and do." And if you don't, uh, if you don't, uh, if you come in a situation you, you don't have the immediate answer, just swing it and then tell me later. So, very right. creative. That's very creative. So now, when you were building this program, what's your vision of a perfect mentor mentee program? Uh, the the well, <laughs> my vision for the program was there's create a, a, an entity, create a community. Uh, really, that's the way I like to say it. Say it. A community of. Uh, alum and friends of the Georgia State that want to help students and the students that have a business idea that they need help on in some specific way we're not we're not uh, career coaches I didn't want to set up that and I know that uh, uh, we can look at those those relationships in a manner such that it's just creative and you're the students are, have an idea have a business idea a solid idea they need help and we have on the mentor mentor side we have mentors who have specific expertise that can help the mentees. So I'm looking for like-minded mentors and like-minded mentees. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like-minded mentees. And you put those two together and you solve a pro- real, real world business problem. So now you mentioned that uh, GSU has been around for a while. There's 100,000-ish Something alumni like that. out there. There must be thousands of uh local people here still in the metro atlanta area who are available this pool of potential mentors has it been difficult for you to kind of get the word out and get them to uh commit to being a mentor no actually it's been easier than i thought i've got a lot of mentors that uh, a lot of business people business professionals once you tell them what you're trying to do oh we'd like to get involved Mm -hmm. Uh, the the challenge we're having is uh uh, where we look at the students and the mentors and matching them up with, with their like-minded needs um, and also that commitment for at least a semester, at least one to two hours a week, that's a, that's a little bit of a challenge. But I have lots of, lots, of, lots of mentors that are very eager, that are very excited about what we're trying to do here at Georgia State is stand this thing up and create this, this environment and this community for these students, these 50,000-plus students, to create an environment that gives them – uh, the the help they need to think creatively and act creatively. Now, is the program very formal in the sense that okay, I'm assigned a mentee and I have to meet with them for X number of hours a week and they have to accomplish certain things and there's a protocol of how I mentor them, or is it up to my discretion? Well, there's a lot of there's some formality to it. I mean, we want we want to have milestones and goals for the semester or for the relationship. We want to have commitments from both sides. We want to have the student committed to at least one to two hours a week to meet meet with a mentor. Same thing with a mentee. Uh, we want to have those commitments, those time commitments. We want to have those milestones and deliverable commitments. So it's not just a walk in the park. We're we're here to help students with uh, with their business model, their business plan, launch a business. We're not here to give you know advice on how to buy a car. We have we have very specific goals here. And we try to drive that every day. So then the mentee has some pre-work to do before they begin the relationship. They have to have an idea that's semi-fleshed out. Absolutely. We want to have a solid business idea. They've done customer discovery. They've done um, a business model. They have a good plan, a good idea. They just need a little more help to get over the hump. Now, what does that first kind of meeting between a mentor and mentee look like? Well, we leave that a little open. We said, get to know each other. Do you want to establish milestones? Other things we just talked about. We mm-hmm. want to establish those. But we wanted them to s- form a relationship uh, such that over the next semester or two that they can help each other. The, the mentor can help the mentee understand what, uh, what needs to be done, and the mentor can help the mentee. So it's, it's just back and forth, but it's establish a relationship, look them in the eye, get that commitment from the student, get the commitment from the, from the mentor, and and establish a plan for the semester and then what's a realistic milestone to achieve in one semester 
One semester, it depends because every student team is a little bit different in their what their their maturity status. So it really depends. But a, a good milestone would be to have have a thorough customer discovery. I really understand what the customer needs are, what the what the problem is, and how to develop a solution to fix that problem. Something very specific. Now, the entrepreneurship uh, program here at Georgia State is it specific to any industry, or is this? It could be manufacturing it could be fintech it could be blockchain it could be it could be anything it could be arts and crafts we have a lot of creative media we have a lot of uh, we have some fintech we have accounting we have marketing we have all kinds of different majors and and uh, taking the ni classes now is when the person is mentoring a mentee is a mentee an individual or could it be a team to be an individual can be a team. I'm, I'm a big proponent of teams. It's really, really difficult to start a business from scratch just anyway. But if you do it by yourself, it's the, the odds are stacked against you even more so. So I'm encouraging, we, we look for teams to start with. And if, it, if there's a good idea, if the student has a good idea, a good business idea, has done a lot of work, but is in lacking of a team, the mentor would help the mentee create a team. And then what are the, what's the makeup of a good team, at least at the early stages? People, a team members that complement each other's skills. And then, in, like, do you want a sales guy and a technical guy? Like, is there any kind of? There's no re- there's no real recipe there. I mean, if, if you're a founder, if you're a co-founder, you tend to do everything. Um, so you want to find somebody. I can do these ten things. You do those those five things, and that'll be great. So there's no set formula. It really depends on the situation. And then, um, how does the matching up? come into play is it like a, my industry is in fintech so you're going to match me with a fintech person or not necessarily so depending it, on my needs it's more need based i mean what do i really need i need search engine search engine optimization i need digital marketing plans i need accounting help it really depends on what the needs are of the student and then what's your like um what is there like how do you know when when you're there like how do you know what success looks like at the end of the semester what what are we high-fiving over you have a customer i mean that's if you have a paying a paying customer you have yippee right? <laughs> yeah yeah and is that uh kind of you have to manage the expectations of the young person when you tell them something like that because a lot of times they get so um, wrapped up in their idea. Oh, yeah. People, not just students, but people in general starting a business, they love their idea. They want, they're in love with their solution. You know, we, we're going to solve world hunger, but, you know, you, can't, you have to slow down. You have to make sure you do your customer discovery. You make sure you solve the, you un, you've articulated what the problem is clearly. There's a lot of things you need to do, a lot of basic things you need to do to get to the winning circle. And that's the, the thing we, we, that the mentors work with the mentees in is to be patient and understand what the goals are and the milestones are to get to that paying customer. Now, part of your work is to build a team of professors inside of the university to help you achieve these goals? Well, I'm just, <laughs> right now, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm circling everybody that, that wants to help. Mm-hmm. It could be faculty, it could be friends, it could be alumni be a wide wide swath of people right now now uh you brought jen daniels with you yes thank you jen so jen what's your role in all this i check a lot of boxes apparently because i've got the (laughs) hallelujah uh, yeah i've got the alum status i teach entrepreneurship here at the university and i'm intrigued by the whole mentor program i have my own coaching and consulting practice so there were a lot of things that attracted me to this and had the opportunity to, to meet Ken, I think, at an E&I event early last semester. Mm-hmm. And I thought there was an interesting opportunity to be involved in the mentor program, given how invested I personally am in the university itself. So now, uh, so you're an adjunct professor? Yeah. So you weren't related to the e E&I at all? You were just working here as a professor in the business school? Yes and no. So I teach entrepreneurship actually in the marketing department of the Robinson School of Business, mm-hmm. College of Business. So it's an interesting way how this E&I department has, has grown and a lot of the other majors have entrepreneurship courses. So I've actually been teaching this course. I'm on my fourth semester teaching it. So I had been intrigued by the work that was going on with the E&I department encouraging my students to get involved uh, because the resources here are amazing for them from a startup standpoint. So to me, it just seemed like a great, I was, I was gravitated here for a reason. 
So definitely teaching the course here, but then I knew that there was a partnership between the business school and then what's going on here at Eden and I. And then you took it to another level of getting involved in the in this mentor program. Mm-hmm. So now how does the mentor program differ than you just helping your students in class? Well, this is interesting because uh, and you're going to get a chance to meet Adesawa here in a second. Not only was she part of this mentor program, she happened to be a student mm-hmm. in my class. So there may have been a little bit of magic in pairing us in our mentor-mentee relationship. But um, in this particular case, it really worked out well because there she was on a team uh, working on a startup in the class, and then we get paired together uh, in the process. So I, It's very meta. Very meta. And that, oh my gosh, my kids just said that last night. I love it. Kids coming up again. So now, uh, in your work as a coach, is it seeing any similarities between a coach and a mentor? Absolutely. And, and that's something Ken and I have spent quite a bit of time on, how much of this is really coaching. And then at the same time, are you doing actual mentoring? And I look at it as more growth coaching and where they're coming in um, and their journey as entrepreneurs. And I do this even whether it's a paying business customer that has me help them grow their business or whether it's the students either way um, that's that's my role is to elevate them where they need to be to get those goals and milestones accomplished in a reasonable time frame and then to to guide them and and sometimes it's mentoring where it's like no no you got to do this versus that other times with the coaching is where do you and how do you need to be showing up for this event with we're going to be doing a pitch practice whatever it might be so being both roles is really quite powerful so how do you discern the difference between a mentor and a coach i look at the 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 mentor does a little bit more of the telling and kind of guiding specifics it might be if it's around digital marketing or seo or you need some finance particular acumen in an area that to me is more of the you know the mentoring side the coaching really comes in about that how do you show up as that entrepreneurial leader and that's a little different and that's kind of bringing them up from the inside out Mm mm-hmm and then uh, when you're working with the students, what do they typically need more of? No, that's been interesting. I think it's a, we'll look over here. At, uh, I want to hear this answer. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I think they it's, it's coming in uh, even. They, they think oftentimes they want the technical, the kind of mechanical guidance of the business. And oftentimes it's helping them decipher all of the things that are in front of them. How do they step into the leadership role of running a business? That's pretty intimidating to a young person when they're starting a company. So they also see a lot of the milestones other people have done, and they compare themselves oftentimes to those milestones. And we need to kind of bring them back to what's really important for you in this business and serving your customer segment now. And that, does that kind of that that's a mindset shift? A lot mm-hmm. of entrepreneurs come in like I'm going to solve this problem, mm-hmm. and then their role evolves to now I'm leading a team, which is different skills. Totally. And then so coaching them through that, that's a, a job unto itself. Right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean that's why I that's, that's why, why there are leadership have, uh, <laughs> coaches that are out there today, uh, now, just for that reason. So now, how has working with young people impacted your your day mm-hmm. job? certainly opened up my perspective on uh, the, the challenges that they're facing is, is very similar. I, I was a little surprised that they there a lot of the same hurdles that are facing younger entrepreneurs, student entrepreneurs are very similar to others in the Atlanta area. It allows me to stay very connected to the startups that are here in Atlanta because I'm bringing my students these opportunities. I'm having them go to the ATV and other organizations in the area to leverage their resources and connect them to my entrepreneurial network so they're all learning from each other that's what this community is about is really about learning from one another everyone's on the same journey maybe maybe you think you you, some people think they're farther along than others in reality we're all just trying to marshal through those milestones to get us closer and closer to serving the customers needs now ken do you find that the atlanta community the entrepreneurial community is more collaborative than in maybe other parts of the country do you think that that's some secret sauce the southern hospitality and that it, people do tend to want to help each other well i can't speak to what schools what communities are doing around the country to to a large degree i've been i've traveled around a lot uh, denver has a lot great community uh, Southern California, New York City is great. Got a great uh, entrepreneurial spirit, believe it or not. Um, but Atlanta is just just cooking. I'm telling you, there's something. There's magic in the air in this place. That people are coming down here looking for things to do. Money's flowing in. It's a really, really dynamic environment for startups and and and, com- and students who want to think creatively. And it's just a, a wide open market. And Jen, why don't you introduce your mentee? 
All right. <laughs> she so, is phenomenal. All the days so I'm going to have her talk a little bit about um, the journey that she's on. She's really, um, she's building a, uh, she really has a movement here. So All right. So um, lean in there and tell us uh, your experience so far in this mentor mentoring um, the experience has been great. I really appreciate Ken for creating this program and Jen for volunteering and being Got to part lean of in it. there. Okay. Rockstar. Oh, Rockstar okay. close. <laughs> um, the experience has really been great and I really appreciate it. Um, I've learned a lot from being in Jen's class as well as from the mentorship program. I realized that channel testing is very important. Customer discovery is very important and really like knowing your customer and letting your customer be like the center of your business is very very important so that was different than what you thought yeah what did you think at first i thought it was just okay i'm gonna create this business i have this problem other people probably have this problem and so what's the problem you're trying to solve i'm trying to solve um the problem of unisex like skincare companies because there's not that many um companies out there right now that are unisex as well as i'm on a mission to help people understand like their value so i'm clearing their skin and helping them um, understand their worth Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then so that was your, the initial concept no initially it was just like i just want to help people clear their skin okay so it was just the kind of practical yeah just practical and yeah. now you've expanded it to a bigger why mm -hmm. now is yeah. that something that you learned in the class or that you just kind of organically figured out by um, just talking to more customer or potential customers yeah i think that's what it really is talking to customers um, and realizing within myself like this is something that i struggle with and through going through the customer interviews and going through customer validation, I saw that a lot of people, when their skin doesn't look good or when they aren't, like when they don't look good physically, they feel really insecure. So I went and I pieced those two together and was like, I really want to help people. So you're really in the confidence business. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's, again, that's not where you thought you started. Right? No, not at all. <laughs> so now when you're in this other kind of business, now mm -hmm. everything changes, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. It changed a lot of just my dynamic. I really had to like pivot for a lot of things that I thought I wanted to do versus now I'm on this whole new like mission, whole new drive. And I'm, I'm really glad I did pivot. Overall. Now, um, did it make it harder or easier once you kind of had this epiphany moment? Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like, oh no, go did ahead. You, did you feel like I was wrong or you feel like I'm closer to being right? I felt like I was wrong originally. <laughs> I felt like I was wrong and I was very defeated. Um, but then as like I look back now where I am, I'm glad I was wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now there's a bigger kind of opportunity yes. now, right? Yes, definitely. A bigger opportunity, bigger target market, um, and more of an impact that I'm making. Now, did you, did this, was there kind of a light bulb moment where you're like, mm -hmm. hmm, maybe I'm, this is the wrong path and then maybe I should go this way or did it just kind of slowly incrementally come to you? Um, I think it slowly incrementally came to me. Um, and then now it's like, oh, there's the now light it's bulb. O it's obvious now. <laughs> yeah, right? now it's obvious. But in the moment, like in the past, no, it wasn't. Now, do you have a team with you? Not right now. I so this to, is just you? Yeah. And Jen. And Jen. You yeah. Jen. So now talk to me about your relationship with Jen. Like, how does that work? Do you talk, like Ken said, every week for an hour or two? Or mm -hmm. do you have, so it's a set time, Tuesday at 8 o'clock at night, you're calling her, or whatever your schedule is? No. So she has this, um, pro. is it a program? or You schedule, you, you schedule every, yeah. every week. I schedule, like, every week um, on different days for, like, an hour. And it's great. Like, I really, really appreciate her. She's very honest with me, um, very blunt, too, but in a loving way, being blunt. <laughs> She's really great. So you don't dread this call. You look no. forward, you yeah, look forward look to it. <laughs> <laughs> look, we've been in business. There's some meetings you dread, right? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. not unusual. So mm -hmm. this is something you look forward to. Yeah, she challenges me. I don't always like a challenge because <laughs> no one always likes being challenged, but it's great. It's a good challenge and I appreciate it. She's got a big challenge right now. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. So what's your challenge? Maybe we all can help. You got a lot of brains here in the room. That'd be great. Um, so I'm working on my channel testing currently and I have to sell 25 items by next Monday. Mm -hmm. um, she challenged me to do 50, but I was like, ah. You negotiated. Yeah, That's I part of the your yeah. skills you're learning is negotiation. <laughs> yeah, so we settled on 25. So if you are an interested um, consumer, definitely check out my website. It's nurture skincare 
dot wix dot com backslash nurture she didn't tell you to get a shorter url (laughs) working on that (laughs) yeah (laughs) working on it but yeah and then uh so now when you're saying you're you're kind of trying to define the the right channels Mm -hmm. so what does that mean so really seeing like what channel would be best for me to sell and gain a cust- like an advantage in the really highly competitive market. So what's an example of a channel? A channel would be like social media or like Instagram or just using my website in general or through like word of mouth or through blog, blog posts like contacting bloggers, so like that. So have you contacted any bloggers? Not yet, I need to. It's just Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> it's New Tuesday. goal. <laughs> yeah. After the website. Yeah. Now, what about, uh, you have any gut feelings of which channels are going to be the best? I do. I feel like Instagram for sure, um, as well as YouTube possibly, but I'm really highly like, re- like reliant on Instagram right now because through my customer interviews, that's what I found. Now, when you have uh, several choices and channels to choose from, how mm-hmm. do you prioritize which ones you go first? Um, by relying on what other people have told me through their interviews, like how they found out about certain products or certain companies um, and seeing which like outlet is highest. Now, is there a competitor in the marketplace that you're kind of modeling yourself after? Um not necessarily i wouldn't say like i look at other companies like lush is really like popular and um worldwide um and mad hippie but not necessarily because they're not doing what i'm doing so i'm not really looking at them necessarily i'm i feel like my company and what my mission is is really unique so not really no so there's no one to model or uh, maybe in a disparate industry that's Mm -hmm. doing maybe same mission oriented Mm -hmm. work Um, Demi Lovato did have a skincare company that was for like helping people understand their value and whatnot, but it was geared more toward women, not necessarily toward men. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do. So I kind of saw what she did, but it wasn't identical because I'm also targeting another market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is this fun for you? Yeah, it is. It is. It can be stressful at times, but yeah, I enjoy it. And right now you're self-funding this whole endeavor? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have a day job that you're working yes. to fund this? Mm-hmm. I have two. Two. Yeah. <laughs> so Jen, is that unusual to have somebody this young, this committed, and it seems kind of driven and have thought this through? I don't know how unusual it is. I mm-hmm. I would say, with, particularly with our student body that we have here at Georgia State, there isn't a single student that doesn't have a job. I mean, I've always thought that this is a just a rich environment for entrepreneurs. You get a student body that everyone's got jobs. Some of them, many of them are student athletes if they don't have jobs, which might as well be a job. Right. And it's typically, in a day so a situation, two jobs is not unusual. And they're coming to class and they're trying to start businesses. So this is an interesting bunch. I think you, you want to talk about resourcefulness. Uh, this is a group that uh, by just they're coming into school every day, that's their world. So it's an inter- interesting place to start from because they don't have a lot. I had a uh, team last semester in my incubator that uh, the founder was a single mother, twin five-year-olds, had a day job and starting a business that uh, actually it was pretty good. She's actually got it going pretty well now. So it was, uh, that, but that's typical of the university uh, uh, student. Well, it's like what they say is when you want something done, go to the busiest person because exactly. they, they know how to make things happen, right? right. Mm-hmm. Now, um, do you find that the people that are attracted to the entrepreneurship program, they're in all different types of industries? Like that's what makes kind of Georgia State unique in that there are so many disparate industries that, that this entrepreneur can come from? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mentioned earlier creative media. We have a lot of creative media students taking E&I classes. Oh. Creative media is film, movies, uh, the music, all kinds of things. Atlanta is a, is a hotbed for music, and there's a lot of creative media, media music majors that, that get involved with, with E&I. Um, there, we have we have uh, marketing, we have account, uh, we have a law school, but there's we have uh, bio, biological sciences. I mean, we have a lot of different colleges here. And what we're trying to do is foster those uh, those ideas and nurture those ideas and put them in a stream by which eventually they can get into to a mentoring program. And then the beauty of uh, incorporating entrepreneurship in all the different 
groups and all the different majors is that anybody can be an entrepreneur, whether you get a job working for somebody else, it's a mindset, right? That this entrepreneurial mindset is kind of, um, they're kind of being immersed in that. Well, that's one of the goals that I tell the students. It's whether you want to be an entrepreneur or not, these are life skills that are going to serve you going forward. Being able to go out to strangers and do customer interviews. Right. I mean, we translate that all the time. How could you apply this when you are interviewing for a job and being able to understand what's in the mind of the other person and being able to prepare that way? Um, the channel testing is is really powerful to be able to bring that as well. So I mean, multi, you know, multiple sources there. And um, and then there's that, that idea of confidence. I mean, th- that is one thing you were going to be you know, brought down quite a bit. You heard about Adesa was journey where right. she was disappointed at and times. Resilience, right? Absolutely. So, I to me, these are these are life skills, and whether you bring that, I said you will you will step you will stand out. Your value will be very very obvious if you understand the value you bring to a company and the value that company brings to its customer. Trust me, when you're you're two people standing side by side, you will stand out. You'll get the job. Right. When you look at your boss like your client instead of your boss. You behave differently. That's how we, it's a, with the very first day of class, I just well, can attest to this. I say, you guys are the customers of this class. First thing we're going to do is take a look at this syllabus and we're going to, you know, we're going to rework it together to get to the outcomes that you want to get to. Right. They look at me like I've got three heads. I said, seriously? Is it seriously? What are your core problems? We go through a whole exercise like that and mm-hmm. we adjust the agenda, you know, we totally adjust the class schedule to make sure that those challenges that they are facing as students, as, as, as employees, as family members, as members of society, all of that gets brought into um, what we cover in class. Now, what's the most rewarding part of your job? You know, seeing that forward progress, getting phone calls. Okay, great example. Today, I have a former student that got on my calendar for later this week. Uh, he's three, it was from my very first semester teaching and has uh, is looking at a new opportunity and wants to discuss that with me and vet out various uh, options that he has. And that's what, that was pretty rewarding. That was an email that I got this morning and asked if he could get on my calendar. Yeah. And that is pretty... That was pretty amazing to know that that kind of impact can happen and you know to, for that individual right now ken for you what's the most rewarding part of your oh clearly it's, it's having the one student or the multiple or team come up to you after a, a competition or they reached a breakthrough with a customer or they sold their first sold their first product or whatever it is they've something has happened that triggered a, a, a special event for them and they'll come up to you and said professor mathis if it weren't for you this would not have happened I mean, that's, you just can't, you can't measure that. It's, uh, it's, it's more satisfying than anything I've ever done in 35 years of business. And uh, is this something that now, this part of your career, this is, this is the finish line for you? You want to keep doing this type of work, or, or do you have another entrepreneurial venture inside of you? Well, it's, it's, it's very interesting because I was talking to my wife about this a couple of days ago. Um, I love helping students. It's, it's a... Uh, it's become a, a, a beast in Sabi that I love to feed, that I love, I love working with students. And the, the, the interesting thing is I've had students that I've worked with in the past come back to me now and say, well, I'd be on their advisory board, sit mm-hmm. on their advisory board. And I pretty much turned them down because I don't want to get involved in this startup. I started two businesses. I started multiple businesses uh, for big businesses. So I've, I've done it for 35 years. And it's time just to help students right now. And, and I'm just focused on that. Good stuff. So if somebody wants to learn more about the program, what's the best way to get a hold of you guys? Uh, the best way is just E&I, uh, the E&I department, and we can figure out what your needs are from there. And Jen, for you, I uh, want to give coordinates both to your uh, class or information about where to get a hold of you through GSU and also your day job, your coaching job. Yeah, so flyinglaboratories.com. Pretty pretty short. <laughs> We're going to work on that one. <laughs> um, it's not. tried to get flying labs, but uh, that one was going to cost me quite a bit. But laboratories I got, so uh, that's how you can find me. And there's information about the, the course that I teach there. Uh, and you can go to jdaniels5 at gsu.edu if you want to reach me from a from my adjunct professor role. And then uh, is your coaching, is it just local here in Atlanta or – it's, they can be anywhere. They can be anywhere. And so I, the, the core of what I do is work with mid-market companies <clears throat> and help them accelerate their growth 
by infusing these lean entrepreneurial principles into leadership development, strategic planning, operations, marketing, sales. So just help them bring that agility in the organizations, mm-hmm. uh, both with their leadership teams and then throughout their uh, growth efforts. Good stuff. And then one more time for nurture. Um, the email is <laughs> nurture skincare at yahoo.com. And then the website, one more time, get it in there. <laughs> nurture skincare, um, dot wix dot com backslash nurture. And it's N U R T U R. Yeah. Not take off the E. All right. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. And thank you all for being part of the show today. I absolutely love doing this broadcast here at Georgia State. I, I'm inspired, I'm almost a little bit embarrassed. I feel like maybe we should be working harder <laughs> at Business Radio X, but this is a lot of fun. Thank you all for sharing your story. All right, we will be back in a few from the Georgia State University Entrepreneurship and Innovation Institute.